Hey, Michael from Xano here. So a customer recently asked how they can calculate the amount of days between two dates. So we've seen some examples before uh, on our YouTube channel uh, and in the community where we can calculate that with timestamps. But what if we're actually starting with date uh, fields or date data types? So uh, this snippet and this video will show you exactly how to do that. We'll actually uh, convert those dates to timestamps, do the calculation, uh, and then we'll uh, actually be able to get the amount of days between two dates. So you can see on my screen here, I have three different endpoints set up, three different ways of, um, or three different scenarios. It's all the same way, three different scenarios of when you might wanna do this. So let's first look at the database. I just have a single table here called reservation. You can see there's a start date and an end date. So let's first look at just the most basic form. We'll calculate days from the database. So we're just simply going to uh, first get a record. And we'll create a variable here where we will do all those calculations. So you can see I'm starting here with the reservation underscore one dot end date. I'm going to format the timestamp in this character u, uh, which can be found in our documentation. We'll format that in a Unix timestamp in seconds. So in Xano, our, when we store timestamps, they're in milliseconds. So this actually takes it in uh, to seconds. But since we're not actually putting this in the database as a timestamp at all, um, working with the Unix timestamp in seconds is perfectly fine. So we take that end date, we transform it or format it rather to a Unix timestamp. And that allows us to then do uh, basic math, aka subtraction. And so we'll subtract the start date, which once again will be formatted as a Unix timestamp in seconds. And once we do that, well, we're going to divide by this number, 86,400. Why? Because if you just Google the amount of seconds in a day, that is the number it comes up with. So subtracting the end date timestamp in seconds by the start date timestamp in seconds will give us a whole lot of seconds, which is why we need to do uh, this division here. Uh, now, of course, you could also add in maybe a, a round uh, to the nearest whole number or a floor to um, the uh, bottom integer, if so needed. I think we'll get um, some nice numbers here in this case, though, because we're working with date fields. And uh, finally, what we'll do here is we'll update the variable. We'll just basically create that duration field to be on our object. So if we go ahead and actually run this here, Let's run this for reservation ID one. So let's see, we have uh, March 15th through Mar to March 19th. That is a duration of four. Let's run this again for two. And we have April 1st to April 8th, duration of seven. Great, so that's a simple way to do it from the database. Of course, we don't have to include this last up. Maybe we just wanna do something with duration here. You don't actually have to add it to the response, but thought it was nice to show for the snippet. Um, next, let's go ahead and show you how you would do that same thing, but in a list. So in this case, we'll do it through all three records in that query all records. Uh, so we're just gonna actually have to loop through each thing and call it item. And now in here, we have the exact same uh, formula, but instead of our reservations one variable, because that's a list and now we're looping, we're going to use the item variable in each of these. And remember, this you'll this will be required to work with actual uh, data in each of those fields. Otherwise, we'll need to make sure to uh, use the get filter instead of dot notation. And you can check out dot notation uh, documentation and scroll down to see get filter to see what that means. It allows us to define a default value, uh, so things if they're not present in a loop uh, can actually work. And so finally. We're gonna do the same thing, update that variable item. So uh, if we run this, we can see we'll get duration on all three of our records. So we already calculated one and two. We can see three here, 17 through 26, duration of nine. So last but not least, how can we do this from inputs? Well, pretty simple setup here. We have our start date, input, end date. I added a precondition here that just requires the end date to be uh, greater than the start date. Uh, obviously, that should make sense uh, conceptually. 
in our create variable. Same exact formula. Once again, starting with the end date input, now start date input. And so we can actually go ahead and, and run this here. And we need to make sure to wrap our dates in quotes and date field start in a uh, four digit year. We have a two digit month. We'll go ahead and say, uh, we'll say uh, one zero six and maybe 16 here. And our end date will be 23. We'll say, um, 06, maybe 22 here. And if we go ahead and run this, we should see we get our duration of six between uh, the 22nd and 16th. So there you go. Um, that's how you would calculate the duration of days when you have a date field. Remember first, we just need to convert that um, to an actual uh, timestamp so we can actually do uh, mathematic on it and then we can divide it by the amount of seconds in a day, and voila.